Real estate itself has a lot of different aspects, so instead of jumping into the nitty gritty details, for now let's look at the pros and cons of real estate to get a basic understanding. Pros are, you can put little or no down to acquire this asset. Every person in America who has 620 credit score and a good enough debt to income ratio qualifies for a 3% down FHA loan. While most investment properties are only 20 to 25% down. Plus, if it's multifamily like a duplex, part of the rent counts towards your debt to income ratio, so it's easier to qualify. What other investments can you put only a fourth down or less of the whole price, but get ownership of the whole entire asset? Depending on the situation, some sellers will even allow you no money down or they can carry the note and it's called an owner carry and the owner essentially becomes the bank so you pay your mortgage to them directly. In some cases buyers can even ask for 1-3% to seller credits to pay for upfront costs. If the market tanks people still need a place to live so as long as you continue to cash flow you can ride out the wave. As long as you do your research and bought based on value, you should cash flow above your expenses each month. Each time your tenant pays their rent, your mortgage gets paid, and your equity builds. Equity is essentially what the home is worth on the market minus what you owe for your mortgage. If the home is paid off or there is at least a decent amount of equity, then there are things like refinances and HELOCs, and a HELOC stands for Home Equity Line of Credit and that allows the homeowner access to cash to do improvements or even buy other assets to make more cash flow. If you buy a place close enough to where you live, you can check on it and your tenant without too much extra effort. At least at first, try to stick to places that are driving distance away. Real estate is also one of the most tax favored investments possible. It has depreciation which is the mother of all write-offs. To explain simply, this is where you can write off expenses for things that haven't broken down yet simply because you will have to fix them in the future. Taxes are a huge area where most Americans aren't able to save, so you might as well adjust your ways of earning an income that mirror the tax code and the benefits that they give. So on to the cons. You can buy a bad deal if you don't educate yourself first. You are responsible for your mortgage, even if you don't have a tenant or they're late on their payments. You're also responsible for repairs, which guaranteed will happen. Most real estate investors factor in 10% of their rents to be saved for future expenses. And most will likely have to hire out for repairs unless you're pretty handy yourself. If you don't want to deal with tenants, you'll have to hire a property manager which is between 6 and 10% of the rents. For some people, they like this mailbox money approach because it's less hands-on. However, it does eat away from your profit margin. So that investment has to have a good chunk of extra cash flow in the first place to make it a safe investment. Word for the wise is get inspections done on the property during escrow period so that if some unexpected expense pops up, either the seller will give you a better deal or you can just back out entirely before you get stuck with a bad buy. Also, if you live in a popular town, consider the difference between long-term tenants and renting out your house through Airbnb. Depending on your location, you could gain a much higher monthly income stream, although there would be more things you'd have to deal with on a regular basis. Real estate has the longest proven track history for wealth generation, Please consider buying a multifamily or single family home and renting out rooms to pay for the mortgage. Even if you're barely cash flowing, as long as you bought it at a decent time, you will be gaining equity every month and continue to progress forward on your path of financial freedom.